Hi lovelies, it's time for another episode of A Dinner Made Easy, which is all about making dinner in your house a little easier, a little faster, and of course, a lot more delicious. Today I have three amazing recipes that all feature rotisserie chicken. So if you're on your way home from work, you just stop by the supermarket, grab yourself a rotisserie chicken, and the rest of the recipes come together in a flash. Now the average rotisserie chicken usually yields between four and five cups of meat, which means you can usually make two or three recipes with a single chicken throughout the week. In fact, all three of the recipes I'm going to show you today were made with a single chicken. How convenient is that? We're gonna kick things off today with these absolutely incredible ooey gooey chicken and broccoli lasagna roll-ups. I love these because even though they look kind of fancy, they actually come together super fast. And I'll show you a couple of the shortcuts we took to make that magic happen. We're gonna start by mixing up our filling for this. The base is some ricotta cheese, which I love. It's nice and creamy and rich. To that, I'm gonna add some broccoli florets. You can see that we've cut these very, very finely. That's super important because you don't want big chunks of broccoli in your roll-up. Next, I am adding my shredded chicken. We'll get that right in our bowl. I've got some freshly grated Parmesan headed into my bowl, some minced garlic, and a good helping of salt and pepper. I'll give this all a good mix until it's well combined, and then we are ready to get our roll-ups happening. So I've got a square baking dish here. Of course, if you wanna make more rolls, go right ahead, use a nice big baking dish. It really depends on how many you're cooking for. What I wanna do is put down a layer of Alfredo sauce in the base of my baking dish. That will help prevent things from sticking, as well as help to cook your lasagna noodles while they're in the oven, which is so excellent. I'm using store-bought Alfredo sauce. Of course, you always have the option to use homemade here, but I think store-bought works really well in a situation like this, and we are calling this dinner made easy. So, you know, store-bought sometimes is just the way to go. Next, I am using some fresh pasta sheets. You can find these usually in the deli section at your supermarket. I love them because obviously they are no cook. They just do all of their cooking in the oven, which is terrific. The next step is just to spread our filling with a spoon in a nice thick layer down the center of each of our lasagna sheets, and then we're just going to roll them up. It's important when you're arranging these rolls into your baking dish that you put the seam on the bottom so they don't open during the cooking process. And we're just going to repeat that until our baking dish is full of all this deliciousness. Not to worry, you don't need to be Alfredo stuffing them too much. There's lots of room. That's my new favorite pun. Don't be Alfredo, everyone. Don't be Alfredo. Now that all the hard work is behind us, let's be honest, that took less than 10 minutes. It was not hard at all. We are just gonna get these smothered in some more Alfredo sauce. We wanna make sure each one is nice and saucy. And then we will top this all with some mozzarella cheese and a little bit of Parmesan. I've got my oven preheated to 375 degrees. I'm going to get this dish right into the oven and let it cook until everything is heated through, that cheese is melted, and everything is ooey, gooey, and unbelievably delicious. That usually takes between 15 and 20 minutes. When it comes out of the oven, oh my gosh, it is to die for. I like finishing it off with a sprinkle of fresh parsley and some red pepper flakes for good measure and then serving it immediately because it is so good served hot. I will be honest with you, these never made it into the leftover category. Our team devoured them pretty much instantly. That's a very good sign. Next for something a little lighter and fresher and if you can believe it, even easier to make, I am whipping up a batch of my Thai cashew chicken salad. This is so flavorful and comes together in a snap, especially if you prepare your veggies during your Sunday meal prep and have them hanging out in your fridge. Everything can just be basically dumped into a bowl, stirred up, and then served to the entire family for dinner. How great is that? For this amazing dinner-worthy salad, we are starting with our sauce. So that starts with some soy sauce in my bowl. To that, I am adding some freshly grated ginger. I've got a little bit of fish sauce. I know everyone. If you're not into fish sauce, you definitely have the option to skip it, but trust me, it gives this a ton of amazing flavor. A little sesame oil going in here as well. A little agave for sweetness. And finally, we have the juice of one lime. 
my lime is absolutely enormous. So enormous, it actually is not gonna fit in my lime attachment. I'll whisk all of that goodness together and then set it aside while I start to assemble my salad. In this case, as you can see, I'm starting once again with my amazing shredded rotisserie chicken in my bowl. Next, I am adding a rainbow's worth of crunch and flavor. First, I'm going to add some red cabbage, which as you guys probably know is one of my favorite ingredients. To that, I'm going to add some julienne carrot, some yellow bell pepper, some red bell pepper, then I am adding my shelled edamame beans. I am obsessed with these. You will have seen them a lot on the channel lately. They are a great source of protein. I buy them frozen, quickly steam them, or just let them thaw out even, and they're ready to be used. For even more amazing crunch, I am also going to load some cashews into this bowl, and then I'm going to top all of this tastiness off with my dressing. I'll give it all a good toss, and it is as simple as that. You know that concept of eating the rainbow? This is exactly the kind of dish they were talking about. All of the amazing flavors in this salad are sure to catch you off guard. I will also mention that this makes an incredible lunch the next day. You can either eat it all on its own, or you can load it into a wrap, roll it up, and have it on the go. How great is that? For my final recipe today, we are making a chicken taco soup that's got tons of flavor but comes together, again, really, really quickly using mostly ingredients you probably already have on hand in your fridge or pantry. We're gonna get started with some oil in our pot. I am using my trusty Dutch oven. I have to tell you, I did celebrate a little bit knowing that it was Dutch oven season because in the summertime, I don't get enough excuses to use it. Once that oil is nice and hot, I'll go ahead and add my onion and red bell pepper to the pan. I'll cook that, stirring it frequently for between three and four minutes or until it softens up. Next, I'm going to add some flavor with some minced garlic and some taco seasoning. You can always make your own taco seasoning if you want to, or go ahead and cheat with one of those store-bought taco packets. Loads of flavor in there and of course makes your life a little easier, which is what this series is all about. We'll let that garlic and taco seasoning cook up for another 30 seconds or so, stirring it constantly, and then we are going to load in the rest of our amazing ingredients. I've got some canned black beans headed in here that have been rinsed and drained. I've also got some frozen corn kernels, as well as a whole heaping helping of my shredded rotisserie chicken. For the liquid in this soup, I'm using a combination of canned diced tomatoes and chicken broth, both of which I always have on hand in my pantry. Then I'm just gonna bring all of this tastiness to a boil. Once it's reached a boil, I'll reduce my heat to medium low and let it simmer away for 10 to 15 minutes. The best part about this soup is it actually doesn't have to cook for very long because all of the ingredients are already cooked when they head into the pot. So basically 10 to 15 minutes later, you have dinner almost ready. I like finishing this off by stirring in some freshly chopped cilantro and some salt and pepper to taste, and then serving it with some shredded cheddar cheese, a little bit of sour cream, and some finely chopped green onion. I also recommend adding a couple lime wedges on the side for even more great freshness. I hope you guys found all of these recipes inspiring. What I really love about them is that one rotisserie chicken gave us dinner ideas for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. What is not to love about that? If you do give any of them a try, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because I always love seeing your kitchen creations. As always, the recipes are in the description box below, so you can take a look for them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, because there is lots more dinner deliciousness where this came from.